networking, security, and Wireshark. So we're going to talk about some privacy tools, specifically VPNs, ad blockers, and secure DNS. We're going to talk about what they protect you from and what they don't, and how you would use them in your home network. So let's start with number one, VPN. So VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. And in essence, what a VPN does is between a machine, say it's your PC at home, and a destination machine, doesn't have to be on the internet, could be somewhere else on a different network, the traffic between those two are encrypted. So for example, if I have my machine here and I connect to my home router to the internet, on the right here is the internet, and then I connect to a VPN server. Well, all the traffic between my machine and the VPN server will be encrypted. So I can think of this as like a big VPN tunnel. A VPN tunnel means these packets, what you could see is that they're destined toward the v towards the VPN server. So definitely someone can see that you're connecting to a VPN. That's not hidden. But what's going on inside the packets, no one's going to see. They're not going to see what you're doing. And the idea is that you connect to this VPN server here, that, and this is all encrypted, and then the VPN server then goes out and connects on your behalf to other websites, um, and therefore your activity is private from the perspective of your VPN server to the end user. So we've talked about in the past, well, you know, if the ISP can sniff your traffic, um, or if there is a local user, for example, stealing your Wi-Fi and does an attack on your home network and steals your traffic, this will prevent against that. So the VPNs are good for that local level of connectivity. So I always advise people, if you are someone who travels a lot, you do have to use open Wi-Fi because you are in lots of airports or coffee shops, things like that, get a VPN uh, service because that will at least help you protect yourself against this local type of attack where someone is gonna sniff your traffic. VPNs also offer the ability to tunnel DNS. We talked about before that DNS traffic if someone sniffs that, can be used to tell what websites you're going to. So the DNS traffic from your machine will go through the VPN server or to the VPN server, and the VPN server then sends the query to the DNS server and then back to you. Okay, so that's what a VPN protects. Now, a VPN isn't perfect for a number of reasons. Number one, when you sign up for a VPN service, you actually have to register and pay for that service. So you're giving this VPN company um, your ID in some form, your name or your address, uh, and your you know, cre credit card number or you know, Bitcoin account, whatever payment they accept. But you're giving them identifiers, right? Um, so even though the local leg, so between yourself and this VPN server, anyone sniffing the traffic between won't be able to tell what you're doing, the VPN server definitely will, or the owner of the VPN service will be able to tell. Now, a lot of VPNs will advertise they have no logs, right? They have absolute privacy. They do not log your traffic, what you're doing, where you're going. Um, you know, that's a question of trust on your part. Do you trust this company? Um, do you trust that if, say, law enforcement came at this company and said, here's a secret warrant that you can't share with anyone, um, which has happened before in certain countries, uh, that they won't share that information uh, under threat of being shut down, right? Um, so it does, again, help you with this. It doesn't help you if the, this server itself gets compromised either, you know, through some kind of an attack or if it's compromised by law enforcement or other means, okay? Um, the second thing that VPNs won't protect you from is being tracked uh, if you are visiting social media or ad networks. So we talked about before uh, that a lot of the tracking online as to what your activities are, are done through things known as ad networks. Okay. So uh, when you're connecting to this VPN, you may still connect to an ad network and you still may be connecting to social media. When you do that, um, this ad network is trying to pull things like cookies from your machine to identify who you are, what you're doing. So even though you're going through a VPN server, you, that cookie is still going to get transmitted through the VPN to their server. And then they say, hey, Bob, uh, who I have a full profile on, now has a VPN. So they just add that to Bob's profile. Hey, Bob is 35 years old from Texas, and he uses VPNs. And here's the IP address he connected to me, to me from, and here's the VPN provider. 
So that is still a vulnerability when you use VPNs. And then in social media, if I'm logging in to social media over VPN, um, I'm basically just destroying my privacy immediately, at least with respect to these large companies and what they know. Because similarly to the ad network, they're just going to know, hey, uh, you know, Joe Blow with this, this username now uses VPNs. So let me give him advertisements for tech companies now. Because clearly he's tech savvy enough to use a VPN. So that's the downside of VPNs. It, again, it will protect your data in transport to a certain point. You have to trust the server that they're not going to share that data with anyone. Um, and then the actual application of you know, what you're doing is still visible if you actually use certain websites. Okay, number two is DNS security. So if you remember my previous video where we talked about what the ISP knows about you, um, I mentioned that DNS traffic, DNS is uh, effectively a address book for the internet. You connect to the DNS server saying, hey, what IP does Google have? Um, and the DNS server gets back to you with, say, 8888, which is the IP address. And you need that IP to connect to the actual website. Now, this traffic, if someone were to sniff it, say your ISP, they get a copy of it, they could see exactly all the websites that you're going to in plain text, meaning they don't have to decrypt it. It's not encrypted at all. Or again, if someone is an attacker who attacks your Wi-Fi and picks up that data, they can actually see that you are going to Google or whatever other sites that you don't want them to see. So what DNS security does is in effect, similar to a DNS, it will take that DNS traffic between yourself and the DNS server and encrypt it in a VPN tunnel. Okay. Today, orange is the VPN tunnel. Um, so that therefore anyone who's sniffing on that traffic locally. So for example, if, if someone is pulling a copy here, they're not going to be able to see what domains I'm actually querying from this DNS server. They're just going to be able to see I'm communicating with a DNS server. Um, so this is good. Again, similar to the VPN example, this is good for this local leg between yourself and this remote resource. Um, DNS security also implements um, something known as authentication. Okay, because one of the concerns that people have with DNS security is, well, what if a malicious actor is pretending, this is a server, by the way, but sad face server, um, is pretending that they are my DNS server. So this is also known as masquerading, okay? And my traffic unknowingly is not going here, it's actually going here. And this malicious server is giving me bogus answers, like maybe they're giving me the answer to Google as like some malicious IP, and then my machine goes to the malicious IP and gets malware, okay? So DNS security also offers um, authentication, meaning with certain protocols, you can actually use things like certificate-based authentication to ensure that this DNS server's identity is exactly what you think it is and not something different. Um, so those are the pros of DNS security. There's a couple of DNS security um, protocols. There's like DN there's uh, DNS over HTTPS, uh, which is a common protocol to secure web traffic. Uh, there's DNS over TLS, which is basically the same thing. Um, except it uses a different port. It's the same encryption and authentication protocol. Um, and there are some other options as well that are a little bit more advanced. So those are the pros. Now let's talk about the cons. The cons of DNS security are very similar to the cons of using a VPN. Uh, number one, you have to have trust with this DNS provider. Okay, so this DNS provider must be a company that you trust and, or you know, can you trust any company in these days? I don't know. But effectively, if no one else between you and the DNS server can tell what you're doing, they certainly can. And if you don't think that DNS servers have logs, they absolutely have logs. So trust is definitely a factor. If this is a free service, that's better than the VPN server, because most of the time you have to pay for a VPN server, giving them your identity. Um, usually, with DNS resolvers that are publicly available on, on the internet, um, you don't have to pay for them. Uh, however, if it is a paid service, then again, you're giving them identity. Uh, so that's number two. Number three is the performance payoff. So the nice thing about DNS, the way it was designed, is that there's one packet gets sent out with the query, what, you, what IP you want for what home uh, domain name, and then one packet comes back with the answer. Hey, the domain name is at 1234. It's two packets total to get 
name resolution. So basically one round trip time, the time it takes to get to here to here and here to here. With DNS security, there's a whole bunch of overhead involved in creating the secure channel before you can actually do this query. So basically you do a secure channel first and then you do the query one packet, one packet. So instead of having say two packets, you may have something like 15 to 20 packets per query. That's a lot. You think about performance and how much time it takes to load a web page, that actually adds significant overhead to that. Okay. So that's those are the cons of DNS security. It's still better than nothing, uh, but there are some trade offs there. And also, as always, you have to trust the provider. So, last but not least, we're going to talk about ad blockers. So, as you can imagine, what an ad blocker will do is help you block advertisements when you're visiting the various websites. Um, and applications, but they also help block the tracking functionality of those websites. So in a previous video, I talked about ad networks and how um, social media companies, large tech companies share information between ad networks and themselves and sell that information to build profiles on you. Okay. So the way that they do this, I simplified it in the last video, but the way it works is that when you visit a website, for example, if I'm going to visit a social media website from my browser, right? Um, I'll visit the social media site, but embedded in that social media site will be uh, ads. And those ads are served from an ad network. Okay. And then that ad network, when I visit it, it actually embeds something known as a cookie on my PC. And so what happens is if I now go to another website, for example, that uses the same ad network, because there's only a handful of ad networks in existence. Um, well, that ad network will, will, or the PC will also connect to the ad network again, ad network again, but then the ad network is going to see, Hey, there's a cookie here available that this social media site placed in the machine when they went to that. And so then the other website is able to then have, or the ad network knows that I visited the other website. And then that data becomes publicly accessible or at least accessible to this network of advertisers who can share information and build this profile on you. So what an ad blocker does is does its best to block this connectivity to the ad network. You still get access to the websites that you want to get to, but this intermediate piece, the ad network piece gets blocked, right? Which helps prevent the tracking and the profile building. So what the various flavors of ad blockers are as follows. Number one, there are ones that are available in the browser themselves. Okay. Uh, if you ever notice some of my videos, I have both uBlock Origin as well as Privacy Badger, which I use to block advertising websites. So that's one type. The other type are DNS servers, which actually sit in your home network. And these DNS servers have filter lists where if you are trying to get to a website that happens to be on an ad network or an ad related site, um, the DNS server will give you a negative response back to that. So the way that works is that when you want to visit a website, instead of going directly to this DNS server outside, you'll go to your local resolver, which proxies requests to the outside resolver and back. Okay. This is a very common setup in a lot of home networks. Usually your router is your DNS server. But say you set up something like this, this is something, you know, common uh, tool is Pi-hole, for example, for this. And what this does, again, is if you send it a query that's legitimate, that's not related to ads, it will send it to the upstream server and get a response, send it back to you. If it happens to be part of its active database of advertising URLs, it will send you back a null response. And you're not going to be able to load that resource um, on your machine or on your phone. So that's what ad blocking does. Either you, either you can install it in software on the actual device, or you can actually have a DNS resolver that does it for you. Um, and some advanced home networks or some advanced router slash firewalls, you can have ad blocking built right into the firewall. But most home users don't have that. Now, there are a lot of upsides to this. Obviously, you, you help prevent you your information from being tracked and socialized with other big companies. Um, the downside is that you actually break a lot of websites. So if you've used things like Privacy Badger or uBlock before, you'll see that you go to certain websites um, and certain functionality is broken. A lot of advertisers and big companies are getting smart these days and actually configuring their websites such that if you use ad blockers, 
they'll break the website. You saw, you've probably all seen it. Like you go to a website and say, well, this app, you have an ad blocker on, um, the, you know, sorry, this is how we make revenue. And they're right. Ads are how they make revenue, but ads are also how they track you because they're taking that ad data and they're selling it to other places. So ad blockers, I think are very valuable to have. Let's talk about how we put it all together. So how do we put all those tools together to form a secured internet solution, or at least as secure as we can? Um, so number one, get yourself a VPN service. Ideally a VPN service that is focused on privacy. Now, again, you have to trust that server. And then honestly, I don't think it's foolproof. I think any company around the world, if they're pressed hard enough, they're gonna reveal their logs. But at least again, it offers you the protection of the local leg between yourself and that server. Um, you also want a VPN service that actually has a lot of optionality as well. Things like servers across the globe, um, or that have uh, good performance, all that kind of stuff, but get yourself a good VPN server. That's going to protect against, again, local, uh, sniffers, ISPs, things like that. Okay. Number two, uh, get yourself, uh, some kind of ad blocker. Okay. Um, so an ad blocker, you could, again, get software you installed on your machine, like, uh, uh, uBlock Origin. I would probably say if you're a little bit more techie, getting one that is configured uh, as a uh, like a pie hole option, for example, as a DNS server is ideal because it protects everything in your house as opposed to the software just on the machine. Now, you, there's a little bit of configuration here and you're going to have to set in your DHCP settings that this DNS server is your primary DNS server. But it still gives you that um, protection knowing that everyone's devices in the house will have to route through this. Keep in mind, you may have to do some extra troubleshooting and tech support for your family because certain things won't work because they're going to get broken. So that's the trade-off. So, but this is always valuable to have. Worst case scenario, you just do some, add some browser extensions to your PC and protect yourself that way. Uh, number three, DNS security. Um, if you're already running a VPN service, or you have a VPN service, um, the DNS is already going to be going out to that VPN um, server and then out to the DNS service. So you do have that protection already in this local leg. So if you do want to configure certain devices for VPN security and use like DNS over HTTPS, go for it. Um, but I think it's a little bit redundant if you already have VPN service. If you do not have a VPN service, then I think DNS security is something that you want to look into. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions on the topic we've covered, please join the Discord server where we talk all things network. Until next time.